My name is Mark Kenyon, and I love white-tailed deer. I love studying them, too far, hunting them, and yes, eating them. Whitetails are found across a wider swath of America than any other large mammal, which is why I've set out for the ultimate whitetail tour, exploring the wildly different terrains these deer call home and the unique characters that hunt them there. On your love all the time. To kick things off, I'm headed to our nation's capital to learn about the growing culture of urban deer hunting. My plan is to study under one of the most experienced backyard bow hunters in the country, Taylor Chamberlain, who hunts 200 plus days a year to help reduce the overabundant and destructive deer populations of Washington, D.C. I'll get one day to see how he operates, and then I'm heading out on my own to see if I can kill an urban deer myself in three short days. Looking around here, it does not scream deer hunting. When I see this setting, it's, it's great. To you, it might not. To me, I'm actually looking at places where I know the deer might pop out. And it's crazy, right? Because it's a concrete jungle. Like, like, you do not think about deer hunting when you look at this. No, I certainly don't. And, and you won't think about deer hunting when we're in the urban neighborhoods that we're going to go to, any of that stuff, you won't. But you will. But here's, here's my question, is I was thinking, when I'm walking through here, I'm, I'm seeing the, the sights, I'm seeing the history. Did you have a light switch moment where you all of a sudden realized, oh, you could actually hunt these deer? Yeah. I didn't grow up in a hunting family at all. I taught myself how to hunt, um, and I really got passionate about hunting when I was in college. And when I moved back to this area, I found a military base that I could hunt at and I was sitting in traffic to get there and I looked over in a yard and there were like five deer feeding around and I thought why am I leaving deer to find deer right <laughs> they're right here it, they're right here so the spots that we're gonna be hunting mm -hmm. is it similar to like this kind of stuff like big house exactly hedgerows so, yeah, timber so, behind it there are lots of areas where like there were woods and then now a house is there and so there's just like fingers of, of trees and cover and what you do is if you look on an aerial map it's pretty easy to see like where deer would move kind of like looking at a road map right it's like figure out where the tree lines are connecting and yeah. figure out where you know where cover would be where you think a deer would want to live and around this neighborhood it seems like deer live everywhere. In fact, there are more than 400 deer per square mile in some parts of Washington, D.C. To get a better sense of how big this problem is, Taylor's introducing me to Catherine, a landowner who's dealing with this very thing. Catherine, previous to Taylor showing up at your house, how did you feel about the deer situation? It has progressed each year. When we first moved here, when we started building, uh, and the county took all these trees out. The deer would come out and they would go across the water down here. And uh, it was kind of, it was cool. They didn't bother us, we didn't bother them. Uh, there weren't enough of them to eat everything. But then they started getting more and more and uh, there are no predators but the automobile for the deer. And now they're getting more and more. There's Lyme yeah. disease, I've had it twice. And then, there's all the vegetation, and there's the uh, natural vegetation, not stuff I planted, not, not only flower beds and stuff, but I'm talking about the, the vegetation that's native. Now, have you had damage to your landscaping here too, I'm assuming? Oh yeah, but when you don't see any flowers, do you just see things all chewed up? This there used to be flowers? Well, yeah. It's fair to say you view them then as, as more of a nuisance? No, no. Well, the whole automobile situation is more than a nuisance. That's a life or death yeah. situation. When we moved here, one of my kids just, he had worked for a landscaper for a couple of years in New Jersey. And he planted lots of things, but the deer, they just knocked trees over, little ones. So would you say that now given this experience you've had, if, 
if you were to run into a neighbor and they talked about this problem that they've been having with deer too, would you recommend, you know, hey, you know what, I actually might want to consider letting oh, sure. somebody on it. Sure. It, it works out. And the the uh, deer meat goes to... Yeah, feeds the homes. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's win-win. Yeah, um, good cause. It's an absolutely, it's the, the best possible outcome for it. The fact that you can take this overabundant resource and, and feed people that need it without having to spend money to buy that mm -hmm. is really pretty awesome. Yep. So what I was thinking we'd do, I'm not even gonna bring my bow. I think I'd just like to tag along with you, see what you do. I'm gonna bug you with every question I can think of. I just wanna observe one of these hunts in, you know, see it all. And then I'll try on my own. And so here we're using this topography. We're gonna slip down here. Oh, and I think we're getting extra lucky because it sounds like somebody else is running a mower back here. There's a lot going on. So it'll keep those deer bedded up a little bit just because they can't use that, that audio. And so you can see here that we have this little topo rise. This yep. is like an absolute textbook urban setup. Those deer can be bedded right there and they'd never know. An important thing Taylor stressed this week was not to burst the bubble, i.e. give the deer some space. Urban deer are used to certain kinds of human activity in certain places, but Step one foot too far into where they don't expect it, and alarm bells start ringing. So what do you think these deer are gonna do? Like, what's our setup? Okay, so everything is on maximizing your opportunities, and getting on these travel funnels. So we can hear the acorns dropping. We've got a bunch of white oaks here. So we know that they're feeding here. And also I have a camera here, so we've seen them feeding. But now we're using these terrain features to our advantage as well. So we have this point where these deer are gonna walk up and drop right down here. Exactly. It's gonna help with our thermals as they start pulling down that way as well. What about shot distance? I'm not shooting anything over 25 yards. I mean, think about it this way. The difference in a deer running and dying 200 yards over there versus a deer running 30 yards and piling up in the creek is us going over there and knocking on doors. Or it could be the difference in a deer dying in that pool or not. And the last thing I want to do is have to pay to clean another pool. <laughs> What's even crazier is the fact that that will not blow these deer out of here. shot opportunity, but just slightly too far to put carbon in the air. Well, came close. Pretty close to happen there. It's uh, about as close as you can get. It's the truth. Like You could not have had a better example of an urban hunt. We had chaos going on, dogs barking. Lawnmowers everywhere. Lawnmowers everywhere. 
I guess is kind of what I expected. I expected there to be just a wild set of weird, unexpected things. And With my intro to urban deer hunting complete, I have one dreaded permission acquiring task left before setting out on my own. This is, uh, this is when the real work begins. I think I've got a good spiel planned and um, I don't know what to expect. It's gonna be, I don't know, I just gotta get the monkey off my back and just do one, get the rust knocked off and, um, and we'll see how it goes. There's nothing. Hi, sorry to bother you, question for you, uh, but my friend and I have been helping out some of the folks around the neighborhood dealing with the deer overpopulation issue. I've seen a lot of deer. Okay, all right. Yeah, no problem, have a great day, thank you. I'm gonna go and try to find another area. I gotta go way down this driveway, but I don't wanna pull way down there. Um, Taylor's just by the road, so. Could I try later today? I, I don't yeah. want to bother you. Okay, thanks. Hi, sorry to bother you. Uh, my name's Mark. A friend and I have been in the neighborhood helping folks deal with the deer overpopulation. Uh, so it would be archery, hunting, and then we take that meat from the call. Okay. 100% understand. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm an animal lover, but I know that yeah. you've got to Balance. Very true. And, and I'm, it sometimes seems paradoxical, but I'm an animal lover too. Absolutely yeah. love animals, fascinated by them. Um, every once in a while, I try to participate in something like this and feed my family or help oh, folks without, uh, without the means. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you for answering oh, yeah. Questions. It was nice chatting with you. Thank you. Yeah. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Hi. Sorry to bother you. After talking to more than a dozen different landowners who all turned me away, I finally met a couple who were not only open to the idea of hunting, but happily invited me to help mitigate the deer problem on their own property. We got a yes. <laughs> What's going on, buddy? Hey, man, how are you? Fantastic. How is the uh, door knocking experience treating you? I did get one yes. I got permission on actually a five acre piece, but it's it's like five acres that runs lengthwise right along the road. So it's very, very narrow. And it's narrow and long and it's wide, kind of wide open, but it's next to some really good stuff. I wasn't able to get access to my new property until the next afternoon. And with most of my day spent door knocking, I was quickly running out of time for a hunt. Luckily, Taylor had access to another spot I was able to post up on for the rest of the evening. So Taylor was talking about when you're trying to find where to zero in on these deer, there's two key things. I'm going to try to put these two key things into action. Number one, try to think about how houses and available cover funnel deer movement down. The other thing he talked about was the fact that you don't want to push in too far. But I might just slip in here down this old logging road just a little ways and set up like not far off this access road. There's deer in the creek. It's actually bucks. Back out just a little bit. Maybe get into this one here. That fort. 
driving around Mansionville all day and knocking on doors. It does feel nice to just be sitting in a train. Twenty-ish, heading back to the same spot. I was not expecting to see a, a good buck last night. First time in this new spot, just trying to figure out where to sit from the map and walking in there a little bit. I thought that would be mostly an observation stand, but I got about as close as we can get to where that buck was. So I'm thinking I'm just going to stay in that same tree again in the morning, right now, and. Uh, see if he doesn't slide back in and go back to bed in a similar direction, but give me 10 more yards my direction. The morning of day two passes with essentially no action. Rather than continuing to sit Taylor's spot any longer, I decide to try my luck where I got my own permission. I pack up and head to a more urban setting. Well, I just had this whole great game plan figured out that I was happy with. And then the landscaping crew showed up. It's the most ridiculous hunt I've ever been on. So, here's what I want to do. This is that piece we got permission on. Across this little private road is a great bedding cover, and this thin strip of timber we can hunt has a good number of white oaks. So I'm gonna pick a tree and walk the tightrope here and enjoy the circus. Sit two of the day goes about the same as sit one. I see a little more animal movement, but also non animal movement. This isn't the walk in the park I thought it'd be. 
My lack of deer and surplus of joggers continues into the next morning as well, until my luck finally started to change. With no more action following this encounter, and my time in DC dwindling, I decided to switch back over to Catherine's property for one last shot. Scary. 
I saw her bound off, run down to the bottom of the draw, and I didn't see her come out from the bottom of the draw. It doesn't look as good as I would like it to look. It doesn't scream pink, frothy, long blood. I know that for sure. Taylor's gonna swing by, and he's got better eyes than me. Thanks, man, for coming down on date night. <laughs> I'm glad that you're here. It doesn't have like the screaming hot pink blood you like to see it. Anything that's a little meaty. I busted a blade off the broadhead too. Did she blow or anything? Did you hear any blowing? No blowing. This blood of eye problems right around here somewhere. Alright, so that looks a little muscular. There's a little bit. There's some blood. So, I'd say back out. Give her at least an hour. Yeah. The key to blood trailing in the burbs is light management. Yeah. Keeping a subtle profile. Exactly. All right. Yep. All right. Well, All right, I'll, uh, I'll finish luck. her out. Yep. Thanks, man. I'll text you soon. I'll keep you posted, too. Yep. I'll try not to drink too much wine at dinner. <laughs> Taylor emphasized that when hunting in an urban environment, there is no room for air. With people all around, in a mosaic of private property borders, you simply can't afford anything but a perfect shot. And unfortunately, it looks like I might have fallen short. Blood here, that's a dog. Blood, there. You know, it didn't go the way I wanted to. We, I followed blood down that ditch right to where I last saw that doe and long story short got to the end of the property that we had permission on and it was angling towards one so i thought okay be on the safe side knock on both doors to make sure you've got permission one of the properties said yeah no problem the other landowner said they were going to call the police uh, so i said well hey you know we don't need to go that route if you don't want me on your land you know i'll, I'll finish looking everywhere on the property i currently have permission on and then if we have to you know i'll follow up with you after I left, they called the police anyways. You know, we talked to them and explained what's going on and they let us go on our way, but right at that same point is where blood basically dried up. Then after that was nothing, like a drop. More of the story is we weren't able to recover the deer. And that is a really unfortunate reality of bow hunting sometimes. The urban hunt was one I will not forget ever for a lot of different reasons. And, um, you know, I, I can see why Taylor likes it. I can also see that, you know, while some people might think at the surface this looks easy because there's deer feeding in people's yards, uh, it's it's not as easy as it looks. Kudos for Taylor for, for doing something that is not easy, but uh, I'm glad he's got it figured out. I still have some figuring to do, I guess, and that's, uh, that's all she wrote. <laughs>